Lua is crazy. It's used to create games in Roblox, program robots and Minecraft mods, and it's even used to create highly sophisticated malware for cyber espionage. Wait, what? This embeddable scripting language is more powerful than you might think. And to test it out, and with February being the month of love, I thought it was only fitting to create a small game in Lua using the one and only Love 2D. See where I'm doing now? So I got my parents' permission, logged online, and went to love2d.org. Also, people don't say that enough anymore. I temporarily got distracted by this giraffe game, but then I got back on track and downloaded and installed Love 2D. How do you know? Well, if you see this, whatever the heck this thing is, then it means you, it's, you did it. After that, I jumped into subline text and played around with just trying to draw Hello World. Also, ignore that error at the bottom. Uh, I just, it's fine. And there we go. Hello world. Beautiful. Now, we can't create a game in Love 2D without making it about one of the most universally loved things on the internet. Politics. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I mean cats. And for some reason, the game Pong came to mind when I think about cats. Something about hitting a ball viciously just reminds me of behavior you'd see from a cat. So with my vague game idea and theme in hand, I jump back into programming to just start blocking out some movement. I quickly created a window size and avoided one of the most dangerous things of all when programming, and that's purchasing a license for subline tech. After that, I threw in a little bit of movement code and bada bing, bada boom, we got a paddle and it's, it moves up and down. After this, I create a ball and uh, it's, it's a little slow, but then I made it fast. And then lastly, I created another paddle on the right side that had the same movement, just copy and pasted it. And now you can play Pong by yourself. Great, but um, uh, it's not very original. Now that I had the base mechanics done, it was time for me to actually create some unique mechanics out of this. So I started off by making the background pink. I don't know why. It just, I think it helped me, I don't know, just ignore it. And then I created this pause menu that I don't know why I made this, moving on. But then it occurred to me that it would be fun to play Pong, but like with a cat's paws hitting the ball. And instead of it being horizontal, I made it vertical because I don't know, it just works for my brain. But then I quickly realized that it would almost be more fun to have two hands two paws that you could play with and then just try to bounce the ball off the wall or something. So that's why I created and I made it so that the left hand can only come over so far and the right hand can only go over so far. So you have to be, it's kind of strategic. And now that I had a rough draft that I was pretty happy with, it was time for the greatest part of any of these challenges and that's creating the artwork. I started out by making this checkered pattern background. Um, yeah, it looks like the blue one. And then I started illustrating some super cute cat paws. But I quickly realized this looks kind of weird to see the top of the cat's hand instead of the bottom. So I removed the paw pads and made it look like it's, you're looking top down on the cat. And of course, we needed a ball, so I made a ball. I quickly implemented the ball artwork and the new background, and I even put this border around it so it kind of feels like a Polaroid. Then after that, I imported the cat artwork. Uh, uh, stop, stop, stop. Stop! And at this point, I just was tweaking some things. I polished the movement so I had some acceleration and friction. I also sped up the ball so it wasn't just super slow. Uh, this also happened. Uh what? And after fixing some of those bugs, it was time for us to jump into polishing the game. I went to freesounds.org and looked for some ping pong sound effects. After filtering through some pretty weird ones, I was able to find some pretty nice sound effects. I randomized and changed the pitch of the sound, and then I changed the background artwork so it had a gradient in the bottom so you could tell where the exit was, where you're, you can be scored on. I also added a meow sound effect because of course, and I created a score system so every time you hit the ball, the points go up. Then I created a a super simple high score system so it would save your best score and then when you surpassed your best score you would hear this very echoey meow sound to let you know that you did a great job. In the last and arguably the most important part I reached out to my friend Bonzo to create a track for this game and after what felt like five minutes he sent me this beautiful track. Take a listen. And even though I didn't create a menu for it, I decided to call the game Pong, like P-A-W-W-W-N-G, uh, just because I couldn't resist the pun. Now, as always, I wasn't able to add everything I wanted to. I wanted to add some variation to the cat arms, maybe make it so you could play against an opponent. With that said, I did make it so the ball slowly increases over time, so the game actually does get more challenging as you progress. And it's funny how games that are so simple like this can be so extremely addicting. I found myself picking up and playing this and just listening to the music and the ambience, and it just, it just a chill time. Overall, Lua was true to its name. It was powerful, it was simple, it was lightweight, and honestly, it was super easy to use. This was probably one of the easiest frameworks I've used so far, and highly recommend it if you're getting started programming. But with that said, if you want to learn how to program and you don't know where to start, then check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. 
Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational advanced math to programming, AI, neural networks, and more, with new lessons being added each month. And their interactive lessons have been proven to be six times more effective than passive learning, like just watching random lecture videos. Being able to see what you're learning is really important for engaging with concepts. And Brilliant storytelling makes abstract ideas actually relatable. One course I really like is Computer Science Fundamentals. It basically is Programmers 101. It helps with decision making, writing programs, and algorithms. It's fantastic, and I highly recommend it. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, there is a 30-day free trial. All you have to do is visit brilliant.org slash goodgifts or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And I just want to say thank you to Brilliant for supporting the channel and my game dev journey. Also, make sure to check out my website, goodgifts.fun, if you want to see the latest news on what's happening. It's just kind of a hub. It's a resource for goodgifts stuff. Also, if you would like to play this game for yourself, please let me know. And, and maybe, maybe it might, maybe it might be on my website. You never know.